Well, today we are joined by Rhode Island's General Treasurer, Seth Magaziner. Treasurer, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Kim. So I understand earlier this week you made an announcement about the 529 college savings accounts and something new that people who have those accounts can do with that money. Can you tell us what's going on there? Yeah, it, it is vitally important that we make it as easy as possible for Rhode Islanders to get access to high quality job training, um, especially these days. There's a lot of Rhode Islanders uh, due to this pandemic who are out of work, who have lost their jobs, who have had their wages cut. And so we wanna make it as easy as possible for people to get the training and the skills uh, that they need to re-enter the workforce into more stable jobs. And so uh, our office runs this program called College Bound. Uh, it's the state's 529 college savings plan. And it's a tax-free way for Rhode Islanders to save for the cost of higher education for themselves or their families. You can put, you know, start an account with as little as $1 and have it grow tax-free uh, to pay for tuition and room and board and uh, all the costs associated with higher education. The announcement that we made this week is that now uh, money in these college-bound accounts can be used also to pay the costs of apprenticeship programs. Uh, apprenticeships are a great way to get job training. Uh, you can get on the job training at the same time that you're getting paid for that job. And there are apprenticeship programs available in Rhode Island in a range of different fields, um, including the healthcare field, which is very relevant right now, uh, as well as uh, the construction industry and a number of others. So that was the announcement this week. Uh, if you have a college bound account for yourself or for a loved one, uh, that money can now be used to help pay for the cost of apprenticeship programs. And if anyone is interested in opening a college bound account to start saving for the cost of education for a child, uh, the website to do that is collegeboundsaver.com. On the topic of college, uh, millions of student loan borrowers have not had to repay their federal student loans because of emergency relief from the Federal CARES Act. But that legislation, even though it suspended all payments and interest up until December 31st, it is now set to expire unless something changes. So what should borrowers know come the end of 2020? Well, we're all watching closely to see what Congress and the president and the president-elect are going to do. Uh, my hope is that uh, the moratorium on student loan payments uh, for federal student loan borrowers will be extended uh, for the length of the crisis because the crisis is not over yet. And there are a lot of people uh, who are struggling, who've lost their jobs, who've had their hours cut or their wages cut. Uh, so my hope is that uh, the moratorium on payments will be extended. Uh, if not, then uh, the best thing to do is to be in touch with your loan servicer uh, to make sure that those payments are, are restarted so that you're not um, caught in a situation where you're in default. On the topic of the coronavirus, how has COVID impacted the Treasury offices day to day? Well, we remain fully operational. Uh, all of our programs are still running. Uh, members of the public can still contact our office. We prefer that they contact us by phone or online uh, due to social distancing, though um, uh, our in-person service window is still open for people who have no other options. Um, you know, it's been a challenging year to be sure. Uh, the first thing that we did is act quickly to line up uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, emergency financing for the state so that no matter what happens during this pandemic, the state will be able to keep paying its bills and we can keep paying those frontline workers and those vendors that are on the front lines uh, helping to keep people safe. Um, and we've also used the influence of our office uh, to try to help Rhode Islanders get through these tough times. We've used our uh, relationships with banks and credit unions across Rhode Island to really encourage them to be flexible with their uh, customers and to uh, make PPP loans available to all eligible small businesses, not just those that were pre-existing customers. Um, and then finally, um, you know, we've been working a lot lately on uh, some economic uh, stimulus concepts uh, along with the governor and the General Assembly. Um, I'm hopeful that the General Assembly, when it meets next week, will take up a package of bonds that we've proposed uh, to help put Rhode Islanders back to work on projects across the state, whether it's improving our parks and beaches, um, uh, building out our supply of affordable housing, uh, upgrading facilities at our colleges and universities. Uh, these are all programs that can put Rhode Islanders to work, get Rhode Islanders back in the workforce so that we can have a strong recovery uh, when the virus finally uh, begins to recede. 
changing gears just a little bit treasurer to a topic that I know is pretty popular with our viewers every year your office receives unclaimed cash and assets from businesses banks landlords safe deposit boxes I'm wondering how much unclaimed property your office received this year well this is my favorite part of my job as I always say uh, Kim and um, and more important than ever this year uh, I would say because uh, you're right, um, our office receives millions of dollars of missing money every year. Uh, this is money that belongs to Rhode Islanders, um, but for whatever reason has been misplaced. It can be old bank accounts that have become dormant. It can be insurance settlements that people didn't realize that they were owed. Um, and uh, we, in the last uh, 12 months, have received more than $20 million of this missing money that we are trying to reunite with the rightful owner. Uh, since I took office as treasurer, we've succeeded uh, in reuniting more than $50 million with Rhode Islanders, but we still have more that we're trying to find the rightful owner for. So uh, for anyone who's watching at home, uh, we encourage everybody to go online, check our database to see if we have any missing money for you. Uh, the website to do that is findrimoney.com. And we have millions of dollars that we're trying to get out the door back to its rightful owner. So um, I guarantee that, you know, if you're watching uh, this program, uh, even if you don't have missing money, I guarantee that if you search your friends and your family in Rhode Island, you'll find somebody who does. And, uh, and you can play Santa this year and uh, reunite your friends and your family with, uh, with their unclaimed money. And Treasurer, I can't let an interview opportunity with you go by without asking about a potential run for governor. Any idea when you will make a decision whether or not to toss your hat into that race in 2022? Well, I, I care very deeply about the future of the state and making sure that we have a strong recovery from this crisis. Uh, my focus right now is entirely on doing uh, my work as treasurer to help the state get through this pandemic and make sure that we come through it in a financially sound way. Um, a lot of people have been encouraging me to look at the governor's race, which um, you know is very flattering, of course, but my focus right now is entirely on doing what I can from the treasurer's office to help our state get through this crisis and have a strong recovery. Anything else you'd like to add or let our viewers know this afternoon? Well, look, this is uh, gonna be a tough couple of months as we go through the winter. Um, you know, cases are spiking and uh, you know, it's, it's a tough season, I think, for a lot of Rhode Islanders. Uh, what I would just say is if we all continue to gut it out for a couple more months, uh, follow the rules, follow the social distancing guidelines, the best thing that we can do to get our economy open again and to get back on track uh, is to continue to follow those guidelines for a couple more months uh, so that we can beat this virus and have a strong and robust economy. Rhode Island's General Treasurer, Seth Magaziner, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me, Kim.